Hi, I'm Dylan Getman, accompanied by my alter ego, Grant Getman. This is Crash Course European History, and today we're talking about the Congress that brought order and prosperity to the land. That's right, the Congress of Vienna. Mr. Getman, Mr. Getman, Mr. Getman! Yes, Schwinn from the past. Why not our Congress? Uh, I'm not gonna get into that all by myself. Anyway, let's get right into this. Play the intro. Dude! Play the intro! The origins of conservatism stretch back to the French Revolution when its ideals were used by the world powers to prevent revolutionary fervor from spreading, and it worked! In Edmund Burke's A Letter to the, a Member of the National Assembly, he said, Society cannot exist unless a controlling power upon will and appetite be placed somewhere, and the less of it there is within, the more there must be without. It is ordained in the eternal constitution of things that men of intemperate minds cannot be free. Their passions forge their fetters. Basically, undermining democracy and liberalism, Edmund Burke promoted the idea that conservatism allowed for the most stable form of government and suppression of the very people who threatened the power of the state. On the other hand, Joseph de Maistre founded a form of conservatism based on more counter-revolutionary and authoritarian ideals. Later, the Congress of Vienna adopted his philosophy that only absolute monarchs could guarantee order in society in its principal legitimacy, which we will go into more detail later on. Now, there were five key players during these conferences. Clemens von Metternich, an Austrian statesman who was the host, Tsar Alexander I of Russia, Viscount Castlereagh of Great Britain, Prince von Hardenberg of Prussia, and most surprisingly, Charles Talleyrand of France. Yes, you heard me. Metternich invited the very country that was being reprimanded to the Congress of Vienna. France was only forced to push their borders back to those of 1792, pay a war indemnity, and accept an army of occupation for five years. This differs from the Paris Peace Conference, as you will see in the video we will never make, that Germany, who was being punished, wasn't invited. That reminds you of the party that all my friends went to and I didn't get the letter. Oh wait, I don't have friends. Mr. Getman, why were all these historical peeps gathering in Vienna? Well, good question. This Congress was called into being as a result of the actions of Napoleon born to party. I mean Bonaparte. After his defeat, a quadruple alliance of Great Britain, Austria, Prussia, and Russia agreed to remain united and restored the Bourbon monarchy, not the alcohol, although they did party a lot, to France, in the person of Louis XVIII, via the principle of legitimacy. They also decided to meet in Vienna in 1814 to arrange a final peace settlement, aka the Congress of Vienna, aka the point of the video you're watching right now. If you haven't figured that out by now, you should probably consult a therapist. This quadruple alliance made up what was called the Concert of Europe, a rock band that rivaled that of Queen. I heard their mixtape was fire. Uh, Mr. Getman? The Constant of Europe is not a rock band. Oh man, I could have totally seen Metternich rocking that electric guitar. <laughs> Apparently, the Constant of Europe is actually just the name for the Quadruple Alliance. This alliance was developed due to the conservative fear of revolution and as a means to maintain the new status quo they had constructed. The first problem to take care of was an upset in the balance of power. After the Napoleonic Wars, a new independent Polish kingdom was established called the Duchy of Warsaw. Prussia and Austria were then compensated for their losses by receiving other territories. Also, 39 German states were combined into the German Confederation, and Switzerland, Netherlands, and Belgium were created as buffer states between France and the rest of Europe. These precautions were used to check how much power France had and hopefully contain future French revolutions and prevent them from spreading. Four congresses were held from 1818 to 1822. During the first and most important one, at Aix la Chapelle, the four great powers agreed to remove their armed forces from France and add France to the continent of Europe. This turned the Quadruple Alliance into a quintuple alliance. Mind blow! <laughs> That's right, four plus one equals five. What came next was surprising. Didn't think history could get more exciting? Well, it does. At the Congress of Trapau, Metternich proposed a principle of intervention. This principle stated that if, owing to such situations, immediate danger threatens other states, the powers bind themselves by peaceful means, or if need by arms, to bring back the guilty state into the bosom of the Great Alliance. 
But Mr. Gatman, Mr. Gatman! What, twin from the past? Where did they end up intervening? Great question. Like, I wasn't going to answer that anyway. If you would have just let me finish... Oh! Menish thought the Italians and the revolutions were a threat to Austrian domination of the peninsula. This, fervored by revolts in Spain and the principle of legitimacy, led all countries in the concert of Europe to invade nations experiencing revolutions in order to restore their traditional monarchs and bring back what the conservatives thought was stability. Well, all except Britain, which pulled out of the Quintuple Alliance and the concert of Europe during the same meeting this was proposed. Completely ignoring the British, two more conferences were held. At the Congress of Leibach, Ferdinand I of Spain was restored to his throne and after, at the Fourth Conference in Verona, Ferdinand VII of Italy was restored as well. This illustrates the principle of legitimacy, as I hinted extremely obviously earlier. The conservatives blamed all that had gone wrong after the Napoleonic Wars on the removal of the traditional institutions of the ancient regime, or the time before the French Revolution. Reintroducing these institutions included the reinstatement of the inherent monarchs as well as universities and state churches. Again, principle of legitimacy, history repeats itself a lot, man. Besides bringing pre-Napoleon era monarchs back to power, this name evolved to form the term we nowadays call legit. I would now like to mention that this video is legit, man. Oh, it's time for the open letter. Vamanos! <laughs> But first, let me take a selfie. Let's see what's in the secret compartment today. Oh, a Vienna sausage. How appropriate. This wasn't invented in Vienna, guys. Shame on you. I'll eat it later, probably off screen, alone, in my pajamas, in my mom's basement, because I live there. An open letter to Metternich. Dear Metternich, you were a great man who kept stability in Europe and was the main player at the Congress of Vienna. I mean, what do you think of when you hear Congress of Vienna? I don't know, Vienna Congress of? No, Metternich! Although I applaud you for keeping peace for many decades after your death. I mean, come on! You fled Austria and went to hide in England. Don't pull a James II on us. But you know who didn't win back? That's right, the Mongols. Anyway, if you were still around today, you might have been a good politician. Ha, we need some of those. Best wishes, Gavin Twins. While the concept of Europe suppressed nationalism and prevented revolution in Europe, in Greece, it did quite the opposite. In the late 1820s, Russian, British, and French forces all sent troops into Greece to defeat the Ottoman Turks and drive them out of the country, therefore gaining Greece its independence. In part, this was due to the fact that all three of these countries wanted land and control in the Balkans, but mainly because Greece was the birthplace of democracy. Yeah, freedom! Think of the Balkans as a huge candy bar, and the world powers are babies. Let's just say they have acted with that kind of knowledge before. Who want the candy bar? Now you get the picture. Being the first successful revolution before 1830, the Greek revolt sparked many more to come. After only 50 years, the concert of Europe will disintegrate following the Crimean War. And after 99 years, the Congress of Vienna stability will be no more with the beginning of World War I. Too bad Bismarck wasn't there. 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 Thanks for watching. Crash Course European History was made with the help of only these two nice people. I think Metternich is a really cool guy. I wish it could have been as successful as him. I mean, successful in any way. I'm a failure. Anyway, as we say in my hometown, don't forget to eat cheesecake.